Welcome to today's webinar, High Viscosity PAOs and Lubricant Applications with Chevron Phillips Chemical as your host. My name is Amy King and I will be your moderator today. Before we get started, we'd like to cover a few housekeeping tips to ensure the success of today's webinar. All lines have been muted throughout the duration of the presentation. Q&A will be addressed in the last 15 minutes of the pres presentation. We invite you to submit questions during the webinar by using the Q&A tool at the bottom of your WebEx screen. Please note this webinar is being recorded and will be archived on the Chevron Phillips PAO website. We'll provide that web address for you at the end of the presentation. We thank you for your participation. I would now like to introduce our two speakers, Miles Overton and Ken Hope. Miles Overton is the PAO Global Business Manager for Chevron Phillips Chemical. Miles oversees the marketing of all PAO products sold globally and is responsible for profitably growing the PAO business line through expansions of current assets and third-party tolling and directing PAO research and technology efforts. Our other speaker, Ken Hope, graduated with a PhD in physical chemistry from the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Ken has over 20 years of experience in the lubricant industry. His research interests have been primarily focused in the area of polyethylenes and the use of synthetic lubricants. Currently, he is the Global PAO Technical Service Manager at Chevron Phillips Chemical. Ken has served on the board of directors of STLE since 2006. I'm now going to turn over the presentation to Miles. Thank you, Amy. I uh, would like to thank everyone again for joining us on the webinar, and thank you for your patience as we get everything set up, and for the chance for Chevron Phillips to discuss the high viscosity MPO and the advantages that they provide in lubricant applications. So first off, I, I would like to go through kind of an outline. Uh, we gen basically, we produce the ethylene from, and propylene from our olefins crackers. We then take the ethylene and we produce polyethylene and normal alpha olefins, which go into a variety of different applications. The alpha olefins process produces a number of fractions which are used to provide end uses, surfactants, uh, lube additives, drilling fluids, but in particular, we use the octene, desine, and dodecine into the poly alpha olefins or PAOs. From the standpoint of our supply capacity, we have three locations, two locations CP Chem owned. We have our low viscosity PO unit in Cedar Bayou, Texas, and a low viscosity PO unit in Beringen in Belgium. We also have our high viscosity MPO tolling capacity in Pasadena. Recently, as of last year, we announced a Cedar Bayou expansion study of 10 KTA for a low viscosity plant to start up in the year of 2016. So now I'll turn it over to Ken for an overview of CP Chem's MPO. Thank you very much, Miles, and <clears throat> excuse me. Thank you, Amy, for that uh, introduction. Uh, so at this point, we'll we'll turn and and look at uh, the physical properties of MP, uh, the MPAOs. We make three different viscosity grades of of MPAO: the 65, 100, and 150. Those are all the nominal viscosities at 100 degrees centigrade. And uh, all these materials provide improvements in the areas of viscosity index, pore point, low temperature viscometrics, and oxidative stability. There's some, some other applications or uh, some other advantages as well that we'll, we'll cover that um, are some finer points. But, uh, but those four main points of uh, VI pore point, uh, and the viscometrics, and oxidative stability are, are the main advantages that we, we see. First, turning to look at the viscosity index on the, the chart on the left, we see uh, comparison between the conventional high viscosity PAOs, PAO 40 and 100, uh, to the MPAOs, which are shown here um, in, in red, blue, and green. So the viscosity index uh, for conventional visco uh, high viscosity PAOs is, is pretty good, but it's substantially better with the MPAO, and that's owing to the, uh, the chemistry, the change in the chemical structure uh, that we get from the, from the catalyst that we use. And then uh, uh, from a, just a rough comparison, we see for the PAO 100, about 170 VI, and that changes to about 192 VI for the... Um, 100 centistoke MPAO. 
The MPAO 65 is uh, just slightly less than that, a little over 180, and then the MPAO 150 is up over 200 uh, VI. So, um, uh, in general, you, you do see an increase as you increase the viscosity um, uh, for the viscosity index. Turning then to the pore point, we have the same comparison between the 40 centistoke and the 100 centistoke uh, conventional materials. Uh, the MPAOs have a substantially reduced pore point, so the MPO 65 is a little less than minus 45, the MPO 100 is approaching minus 45, and then the MPAO 150 is almost minus 40, about minus 38, minus 39. But the difference, uh, just comparison, comparing viscosity versus viscosity, going from PAO 100 at minus 30 C poor point down to about uh, minus 44 or so for the MPAO 100 is is a nice uh, improvement in the uh, in the poor point, and in general you do see an improvement in the low temperature viscometrics. Looking at the next uh, slide, we're showing. Uh, some formulation examples where we've taken a PAO6 blended with either PAO100 or MPAO100 or the MPAO150 to a 7590 beer oil. And we're showing on the left side here this uh, uh, Brookfield viscosity at minus 40. So we see a nice step down. And interestingly, you get a, a lower uh, minus 40 Brookfield viscosity for the combination with the 150, and perhaps that's because uh, the thickening efficiency for the 150 is a little better, it's a higher viscosity, so you're using less of that material, um, and that allows you to get a actually lower uh, low temp uh, viscosity. If we look at the right side, we see the 7590 and 75140, and we're comparing those for um, the different materials, uh, different thickening agents, either PAO 100, MPAO 100, or one, MPAO 150. And we see that the viscosity index uh, steps up as you go uh, further to the right, uh, giving the best results with the MPAO 150. The oxidative stability on this next slide is uh, shown where we look at uh, RPVOT in our laboratory as the main way of measuring oxidative stability. And in this case, we're looking at just the neat base oils with a uh, half weight percent of uh, an antioxidant. In this case, we're using the alpha, uh, phenyl alpha naphthalamine, um, uh, and we're seeing results in excess of 3,800 minutes, uh, which is very good. Now, the conventional PAOs are actually uh, very good on the oxidative stability. Um, the improvement we have here actually doesn't come from the, the catalyst that we use uh, to make the MPAO. It comes from the know-how for, uh, for making our low viscosity PAOs that we've uh, applied then to the, to the high viscosity PAOs. Um, nevertheless, having a higher oxidative stability should provide longer life for uh, lubricants regardless of the uh, application. This next slide shows the, the foaming characteristics. And in this case, just to keep things simple, we're just looking at sequence one of the ASDM D892, comparing the conventional PAO 40 and 100 to the MPAO 100. And uh, we have a picture on the right-hand side of the MPAO and the conventional uh, PAO 100. And also, these, these are run just neat, so it's just the, uh, the high viscosity base oil. What we see as you first turn off the air from the uh, from the frit in that test, you, you measure the static foam. So we see we have an excess of 500 milliliters of, of foam measured in this apparatus for the conventional materials. But the MPAO has uh, less than 25 uh, milliliters. And if you look at the graduations on this uh, the cylinder here in the test apparatus, you see that uh, just a couple bubbles would uh, give you approximately 25 milliliters. And uh, that, that time the, um, for the, the top of foam after 10 minutes is, is approaching 500 milliliters for the conventional materials, but it's, it's down to zero for the MPAO 
That is because the collapse time is only about 35 seconds for the MPAO 100. And conversely, um, we see the conventional PAO uh, being greater than 10 minutes or greater than 600 seconds uh, for the collapse time. And the, the column of foam here, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words. It, it's, it's quite uh, substantial, as we see. The next slide talks about the, the thickening efficiency, and we're using industrial oils uh, as an example here. We have uh, uh, four different ISO grades, ISO 68, 100, 150, and 220. So we take a PAO8 in this case and blend it with the different high viscosity components, and then we are measuring the viscosity index. And so we see that uh, the viscosity index actually uh, improves as you go uh, to higher MPAO viscosities, and all these materials with the blended MPAOs have a pore point of less than minus 50. The other thing that's interesting, if we look at the percent of the uh, high viscosity PAO that's required to achieve these ISO viscosities, uh, we see that it's substantially less than uh, the baseline that we're using, which is the PAO 40. So, uh, for instance, the MPO 65 use about 20, uh, 22, 23% less material than you used for the PAO 40 to get to the same ISO 68 viscosity. And then for the other materials, the MPO 100 and 150, you can see that you can it just improves because you're using even even less of the high viscosity PAO. So overall, that should provide you with a uh, an improvement in the viscosity index, an improvement in the pour point uh, for those those blends, while giving um, a formulation that requires less overall high viscosity PAO, and that should be a much more economical uh, formulation uh, and a, a good starting point for uh, for formulators to uh, uh, to take a look at. The next slide shows the uh, extreme pressure uh, measurements. We looked at the effective, uh, effective pressure viscosity coefficients, and these measurements were obtained at uh, uh, in Hugh Spike's lab there at Imperial College London. But we've taken a PAO6 and a PAO8 and blended it either with a PAO40 or the MPAO65. And the idea here is to find out, well, how does it perform for the effective pressure viscosity coefficient compared to uh, traditional materials? And, uh, you know, in some sense, it's, it's um, uh, an uneventful chart. We, we see very uh, similar numbers across the, across the board, which tells you that you really should see about the same type of viscosity performance under high pressure. So um, uh, it's, yeah, just a, just a good assurance that uh, things should behave the way that you would expect them to. The next slide is... Uh, a uh, graph showing the shear stability. We've looked at the various MPAOs in comparison to a PAO 100. Now, high viscosity PAOs are not known to be shear instable. They're actually known to be very shear stable, but it's nevertheless something to to examine to make sure that we uh, haven't left anything um, uh, uninvestigated. And what we see at first 30 hours of the KRL shear stability test, uh, less than 1%. Uh, shearing for the MPAOs, and then we ran that out to 180 hours to uh, to verify that uh, it didn't shear anything beyond that 1% uh, over time. But it seems like there's a an additional, I mean, an initial shear that uh, seems to occur of, of less than about 1%, and then it it seems very stable after that. So. Um, that's that's a good result. The the next thing we're uh, taking a look at is the additive compatibility. Many people have asked uh, how you can uh, um, use these materials in existing formulations, and it's good to uh, to go in with your eyes wide open and make sure that uh, everything is compatible. But this, as an example formulation, would be an ISO 320 gear oil. Uh, it has a total of about eight, 87. Uh, percent of an MPAO uh, uh, blend, about 10% ester, 2.5% additive, and about 0.3% of a pore point depressant. 
Actually, the four-point depressant was not required in this uh, formulation. The four-point was actually very low without it, but uh, since we're looking at additive compatibility, we wanted to go ahead and throw that in there to make sure that it wouldn't cause any additional um, cloudiness or, or additive dropout. And uh, what we're seeing in the pictures is uh, the initial picture after blending. It's nice and clear. You can look through the um, look through the jar and and see uh, clearly to the other side. Then after 24 hours, it uh, remains very clear. After 120 hours, yes, uh, it, it it still uh, is is very clear. So uh, and we've since seen no evidence of uh, of additive fallout in this formulation. Okay, this next slide is a good uh, time to kind of stop and compare, look at an overview of the different properties. We've talked about viscosity index, and although it's uh, a very good viscosity index for conventional high viscosity PAOs, the MPAOs we see uh, an overall improvement in, in that. And we've also discussed the improvement in the pore point for the MPAOs. Uh, we have seen in the, uh, in the automotive gear oil uh, applications, the uh, the low temperature viscosity improvements. We also see that when we look at scanning Brookfield comparisons to uh, ISO viscosity blends. Um, so in general, you do see uh, very very nice improvements in low temperature viscosity. We've discussed the oxidative stability, and we see an improvement there, as well as the foaming tendency. Uh, one thing we we didn't show, but uh, is definitely true, is is we see uh, improvements also in air entrainment. Um, so that's a nice a nice feature to have as well. We also see an improvement in the thickening efficiency, uh, which may be due to the slightly higher viscosities, the 65 and 150, but we also see a, a nice improvement to the 100. And then also the pressure viscosity coefficient and the shear stability uh, are good with the conventional high viscosity PAOs, and we see that continuing in the MPAOs as well. At this point, this, this kind of wraps up the technical part of, of this presentation. I'd like to thank you very much for, for your attention, and uh, we'd, we'd like to uh, open it up. If there are any questions, you can uh, type them in, and then um, the moderator will uh, uh, read them. Okay. Again, as Ken said, at the bottom of your screen, um, there's a place for questions. I know several of you are having some issues uh, with the registration ID, and we do apologize for the, the issues with that. Um, we will be, we have recorded the webinar, and so it will be on our website um, for you to view the slides there as well if you have issues uh, logging in. We have gotten a few uh, questions that I'll read out and let our, our panel here answer those. So the first one is, what is it about MPAO that makes it foam less than conventional high viscosity PAO? Well, that's a very good question, and uh, one that we've we've thought about uh, quite a bit, kind of scratched our heads about. Um, at first, we were thinking that the uh, the foaming might be explained by the the surface tension of the different materials. So we looked at surface tension of our materials versus the conventional uh, PAOs. And it turns out that that's actually not the truth, uh, not the case. So uh, it didn't explain it. <laughs> what we do know is that uh, MPAOs have a different uh, chemical structure than the conventional uh, high viscosity PAOs, whereas the high viscosity PAOs um, have a uh, more of a random branching. The MPAOs have more of a comb structure, and they get their randomization of the chemical structure from uh, from the chiral center. But anyway, the, the bottom line is there's slightly different physical uh, or, or chemical structures, and it stands to reason with, with different chemical structures, you might get some different physical properties. Thank you, Ken. And that kind of uh, tells into the next question, which part of that you just answered. What is the structural difference between PAO and NPAO? But the second part of that is what catalyst is used? Yeah, very good question. Uh, the little m for MPAO stands for a metallocene catalyst. The metallocene is a wide variety of, uh, of, of a class of chemical catalysts. And it's very customizable. It's a catalyst system, so there's more than one component there in, in the catalyst. And uh, uh, But it is very customizable. We can tailor that to make 
basically the, the type of materials that we need. And those materials, the structure, as I uh, uh, mentioned just uh, briefly, is a, a comb structure, but uh, so you have a backbone, and then you have every other carbon, you have a, a side chain coming down, and that side chain, in our case, is a six carbon side chain because we make these MPAOs from one octane, uh, which is a little different from the traditional one desine, uh, but there are reasons w that we choose one octane because it gives us the, uh, the better low temperature properties. Specifically, uh, it doesn't give us any side chain crystallinity at very low temperatures, which can occur if you use something uh, that's a greater molecular weight than octane as a, as a feedstock. So, um, and then every other carbon, uh, that branching carbon, is a chiral center. And uh, if you remember some of your chemistry, that, that means that uh, uh, you can have um, that branch either coming toward you or going away from you as you're kind of holding the molecule. And it's very randomized, that type of, um, that, that chiral center. And that randomization, what gives us all of our, uh, uh, our, our chemical, um, um, the very different isomers, that, which is what we need. Okay. Thank you, Ken. Uh, another question, what test is used for air entrainment, and what are you considering a good number? Yeah, we've looked at, um, actually, I, off the top of my head, I can't recall the air entrainment test, but um, we, we look at air entrainment uh, at... Um, an ISO uh, 320 and uh, a couple other ISO viscosities, and we see a, a mixture of about um, uh, for the for the low viscosity and high viscosity blend uh, about six minutes on air entrainment, which is considerably better than the high viscosity PAO, the conventional, which is in our test was about 30 minutes. So we see a reduction, you know, there of, of, of about uh, 24 minutes. Uh, in the air entrainment. Of course, air entrainment is the amount of time it takes for the bubbles that are formed in the liquid to come out of the uh, uh, the liquid. So, um, and we could we could probably follow up later on with that specific ASTM test. Um, just escapes me at this point. Okay. Another question, and I know you partially answered this. Why was one octane selected as the feedstock for your MPAO? Yeah, that's a good question, and. Um, you know, one decine is uh, notoriously uh, uh, tight over, you know, you look at the history of PAO, it kind of goes through ebbs and flows of, of when it's tighter and when it's more available. And uh, so one reason for us uh, taking a look at octane is that uh, it was not as constrained as a feedstock. But that, you know, is only one reason. The, the other, and what I feel are the more important reasons, <coughs> excuse me, are that... Um, you get uh, uh, better physical properties overall. Uh, looking at the, the, the low temperatures and looking at the high temperatures, um, the balance of properties are, are better with the, uh, with the octane. Okay. Let me see. I think that might have been the, the last question that we've received. I'll give you guys just a second more if you have any, any other questions. Again, we do appreciate your time. I know I apologize again. I know there were some issues with some of you uh, logging on. We will have this recorded. We will also be doing a repeat of the webinar in the fall, probably um, late August, early September. So we will make sure um, to invite you all again in, in the event that you may have had issues for it. Um, we will have the uh, the presentation as you know as you as it was on the uh, slideshow will be posted on our website. And I can uh, I will follow up with you all with that link as well. But it's our trade name, which is www.sinfluids.com. We thank you for your time, and this now concludes today's webinar. We appreciate uh, your attendance, and um, we will send out more information uh, when we get this posted to our website.